Hi everyone. I need to do another video on this uh, Winter Storm Riley, the bombogenesis, the bomb cycle, because I am not getting something. Uh, I'm going to go to the weather service that puts out these forecasts and read some of the forecasts because it, it's not quite gelling with what an awful lot of people are saying about this storm. But I will tell you that it is clearly manufactured, clearly satellite images. I mean, now it's so clear that they are dumping an awful lot of aerosols to create, generate this storm. I mean, you can see the grid pattern even from here. But look at all of these aerosols right along the coast and a bit inland. Um, the storm has moved a little bit north. You can see all of the frequencies in this storm. But the governor of Massachusetts came out and said that homes will be destroyed, the coastal homes will be destroyed. I got a comment from a subscriber yesterday who lives upstate New York and her town was told to shelter in place or, or it was like a lockdown before the storm even came. And I'm hearing that now today from other subscribers. People are being told not to go outside. This is deadly, this storm. The, the earlier video that I posted on this storm, it seems as if the tail end of the storm, though you can see all of this geoengineering still right here, but it kind of just evaporates down here you can see it also on radar, which it's pretty much gone in the areas that I was showing you, which was Tennessee and, and uh, Mississippi, Georgia, Alabama. That's pretty much gone. But this storm up here, you can still see all of the frequencies being used. So they're claiming that this storm Winter Storm Riley, the nor'easter, the bomb cycle, the bombogenesis, it's going to be worse than the storm January 4, the blizzard that they had. Do, do you like these squares that pop out on satellites now? I've been seeing this rather regularly. Look at this square. Wow, two squares pop up out of nowhere. Oh, another square pops up out of nowhere. Um, but all of the ultra low frequencies you can see here coming out of New York. They're right here. You can see these obvious, uh, frequencies that seem to come from Newburgh, New York, right? Uh, they extend all the way down to Long Island. This is not normal rain. This is manufactured rain that you are looking at. And, you know, the obviousness of the frequencies are right there. All right, so we know that our weather is manufactured. What the governor of Massachusetts is telling everybody on the coast of Massachusetts, well, evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Telling people that homes are going to be destroyed. Some roads in downtown Boston and roads along the coast likely to become impassable for some time. The National Weather Service came out and gave a warning. Wives may be at risk for people who put themselves in harm's way. Uh, uh, the reading and, and the listening of mainstream media, I mean, it is... I don't remember this being the case for storms living in New York, living in Massachusetts, 
Uh, we were not told to shelter in place. We were not told to not go outside because it is deadly out there. This is all new. And based on my read of the forecast from our National Weather Service, which I'm going to read to you, um, it does not seem to match what we are hearing from these government officials and mainstream media reporters. Now, situate residents in Massachusetts who evacuate, you're asked to fill out an online form to let authorities know that you have left your home so they know that you're not missing. I am wondering if if they over-dramatize these things, telling people to shelter in place, don't go outside, fill out these online forms, because they want to see how many people are obeying their authority figures. New York, um, New Jersey coastal residents are boarding up their homes. Michigan and Ohio had lost power to 40,000 customers. My Michigan, Ohio subscribers, could you leave me a comment? Let me know what's happening in Michigan and Ohio. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo activated numerous emergency operations centers ahead of the storm in an attempt to respond quickly to any issues brought about, including power outages, which are expected to be widespread in the Northeast. The Department of Transportation is sending 10 plow trucks and 16 drivers up from Long Island to the southern tier, up from Long Island. And yet, other mainstream articles are saying that Long Island, there's four places, uh, the coastal areas, Long Island, are going to be the hardest hit. And yet, we have the Department of Transportation taking away plow trucks and drivers from Long Island. That does not seem to make sense. CNN, wow, uh, you want to talk dramatic. Another bomb cyclone with a huge flood risk is aiming for the Northeast. And you listen to these reporters and it listen to this. Bombogenesis definitely sounds like a scary term. A bomb cyclone is a low pressure system that has undergone bombogenesis. In fact, storms that undergo this weather phenomenon can be rather destructive, causing a lot of damage. But in the meteorological sense, bombogenesis simply means a storm that drops 24 millibars within 24 hours. So you basically have a storm that is rapidly intensifying. In this part of the world, we see these storms rapidly intensifying because you have the cold air from the north combining with warmer air coming in from the Gulf Stream. We see these in mid-latitudes, and in the wintertime, many times we refer to these storms as nor'easters. They can bring a lot of wind, rain, and snow to the northeast. All right. Well, I don't remember seeing these storms intensify so quickly. They intensify rapidly. Nor'easters, they kind of traveled through those states, and but a nor'easter didn't just suddenly erupt. We knew it was coming. And it didn't intensify. So these bombogenesis, well, here in CNN actually writes um, that this nor'easter, like the one in January, could reach bombogenesis or become a bomb cyclone by dropping these 24 millibars of atmospheric pressure in 24 hours. Um, th th this is a sudden pressure plummet Friday evening off the Atlantic coast. But then they write, even if this storm doesn't bomb out, <laughs> what? Even if this storm doesn't bomb out, the coastal low will pack an incredible punch with places from eastern Long Island in New York to Boston, the places that will get hit the hardest. The moon is full, so the tide is at the highest point. So the storm surges along the coast, could be three to four feet of water into coastal 
neighborhoods. Take this storm seriously. This is a life and death situation for those living along the coast, especially those ocean exposed shorelines. Moderate to major flooding, locations becoming inundated, cut off for periods of time, expect structural damage, homes destroyed. Did we have these forecasts? Am I just not remembering that they actually came out and said, expect homes to be destroyed? Even if it's not a bombogenesis? Even if it, this storm doesn't bomb out? Um, so the Massachusetts governor, yeah, he also has said, stay, in, stay indoors. MEMA, which is FEMA. Every state has a FEMA. So Massachusetts, it's MEMA, Massachusetts Emergency Management. Um, it will be dangerous to remain in the homes. Not only may rescue not be possible, but homes will be subject to significant structural damage. We expect to lose homes during this storm. If you're in one of those areas, you need to get out. So Governor Charlie Baker in Massachusetts has activated the National Guard. 200 guardsmen will be working with local and state officials. I can't stress this enough. This isn't a snowstorm in eastern Massachusetts. This isn't a snowstorm in eastern Massachusetts. But the storm itself, especially along the coast, is shaping up to be more severe than the storm on January 4. While crews were able to perform rescues in between high tide cycles in January, it's possible first responders will be unable to reach all flooded areas at peak high tide tomorrow. I I'm reading this and I'm thinking to myself, based on what I've seen on IntelliCast, um, something has to happen to this storm to make it so destructive. And, well, they have the frequencies to bring that about. All right. Um, so, it, it's hard because I'm not getting that sense from our National Weather Service. So, this is the weather for the country, all right? Now, we're supposed to get 60 mile per hour winds tomorrow in upstate South Carolina, 60 miles per hour. But we have no more storm. That's been, it's gone. Clear, right? It's supposed to be clear. Um, well, they got a little bit in, but not upstate. All right. So where are these 60 mile per hour winds coming from? Um, but the National Weather Service has nothing in South Carolina. So this is kind of like an interactive map. You click on this area and Boston and surrounding area. So you get the forecast for a local area. Boston Totten. Now, I played around with this, and the only forecast that I could get was out of Taunton, but also a local forecast for Pride's Crossing. Now, as you can see, this is very, very close to the coast. This should be an area that is hit hard. What does it say? Tonight, rain mainly after 11 p.m., patchy fog after midnight, low around 37, northeast wind 10 to 18 miles per hour with gusts as high as 34. Chance of precipitation is 80 percent. Friday, rain. The rain could be heavy at times, patchy fog, high near 42, windy with a northeast wind 24 to 29 miles per hour, increasing to 31 to 36, 
Winds could gust as high as 65. Chance of precipitation 100%, and you could get 1 to 2 inches possible. Friday night, rain and snow before 10 p.m., then snow likely between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m., then a chance of rain and snow after 3 a.m., low around 34. Windy, 25, 33 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 60. New snow accumulation, 1 to 3 inches. Saturday, a chance of rain before 1 p.m., then a slight chance of rain after 3 p.m., mostly cloudy, near 42, breezy, with a north wind around 24, gust as high as 45, chance of precipitation 30%. Saturday night, a slight chance of snow showers after 4 a.m., mostly cloudy, low around 33, breezy, with a north wind 17 to 21 miles per hour, gusts as high as 36, chance of precipitation 20%, partly sunny on Sunday, breezy, Sunday night, mostly cloudy. Monday, partly sunny. High, 41. Partly cloudy, mostly sunny. Mostly cloudy. And yet, mainstream media is reporting this as this could intensify throughout the weekend. But the National Weather Service doesn't seem to forecast that. Um, do you get my confusion here? I don't, you know, Ireland, the storms, um, you're all being told what we're being told. We're all in this together. And you get your manufactured snowstorms and weather. Irish people urge to get indoors amid snowstorm. Your prime minister has told everyone that they should be home by 4 p.m. on Thursday and stay there until conditions improve. It is a red alert. The worst snow in 35 years sweeps north across the island. And your storm Emma, it's going to bring gales of wind at 100 kilometers. Risk of life and limb. The risk to life and limb presented by severe weather conditions should not be underestimated by anyone. The forecast is zero visibility, deep pockets of snow and whiteouts. We are asking everyone to be at home and safe by 4 p.m. today and to remain indoors until the severe weather has passed. I'll repeat, nobody should be on the roads after 4 p.m. today and everyone should be in home or indoors by 4 p.m. You had a lot of cancellations at airports. And look at this. You know, we have CNN reporting, well, if it doesn't bomb out, you know, if you don't have that bombogenesis, well, it's still going to be really bad. Yet the National Weather Service really hasn't forecasted really bad. And it's almost like nobody can really forecast weather anymore. It's going to intensify over the weekend, this storm, uh, uh, here in you know uh, the Northeast. Or it may not. Ireland. Um, you're supposed to have a big improvement over the weekend. However, there is a high degree of uncertainty of how this storm system is going to behave. Expect Ireland to be hit harder than anywhere else. And I'm doing this because I have subscribers in Ireland and in Scotland and in the UK. Snow in Europe, deadly winter storm brings chaos. Blizzards, heavy snowfall have closed roads, rail services and schools and forced the cancellations of hundreds of flights. I have heard from Scottish subscribers and they have said that the temperatures are incredibly cold. And one said that they got three feet of snow. I'm not saying that these storms are not bad. But I am saying that they're not, they don't seem to be, there's no really consistent forecast. 
it, that might be the chaos brought about by all of the geoengineering and the weather modification, so disrupting the natural processes that suddenly they've lost control, though we do see the signatures of man's hand in these storms. But maybe they're just now realizing that as much control as they want to have over the weather, maybe Mother Nature is a little bit uh, too powerful for man to control these weather fronts. I don't know. But the weather system in the UK is called the beast from the east, while the Dutch call it the Siberian bear and the Swedes the snow cannon. Snow has even appeared on the normally balmy beaches of the French Riviera. Ireland remains braced for what is predicted to be the heaviest snowfall in decades as Storm Emma moves in from the south. So all of you in Scotland and Ireland and, and other European countries, I really hope to God that all of you are safe. Um, Poland weather related casualties were reported, were reported as far as south as Spain and Italy. Well, in Poland they had deaths. Seven people have died in Slovakia. Six more in the Czech Republic in recent days. Five people were reported dead in Lith Lithuania. Four in France. Two each in Serbia and Italy. Slovenia and Romania. And one each in the UK and the Netherlands. The Ukraine, which has further snowstorms forecasted in the days to come, has found itself in a fresh row with Russia over gas supplies, and Russia has said, we're not sending you gas. Some parts of Europe are expected to see temperatures rise over the next couple of days, although Ireland and parts of southern England are braced for the effects of Storm Emma, which is moving up from Portugal and France. Now, I on Intellicast, I do this span of the world just checking out what's going on. And it's the radar and satellite loses a lot of, of its uh, movement. It seems to stall out a lot. But as you can see, well, as you can't see, Ireland. So right now, you must be getting an awful lot of snow. Let's look at the satellite, because I have, I very often come over here and look at the satellite. And very often, I can't see Ireland. It is completely covered over with the chemicals and the heavy metals and the aerosol spray. So, yeah, you've got your nicely engineered storm, Emma, in which many of you will have to suffer the consequences. Yeah, the balmy area of the uh, Riviera. You got snow in France. Ugh. Well... I just hope everybody stays safe. So many people have already died. Many are rough sleepers. It's the homeless here in the United States. That's the equivalent. Urge people to stay indoors until the storm passed on Friday. Risk to life and limb. So I know that you got a lot of snow and I know that it's cold. But are you seeing your weather in Ireland as well as Scotland, the UK, as so, so drastically different than other storms that you have experienced? Scotland, uh, 
Scotland shines in the snow, random acts of kindness across the nation to warm your heart, which is nice, right? Yes. Um, here, you've had your reception centers opening up for people to wait out this storm. Heavy snow, closed airports, Glasgow Airport. Um, I'm reading that you got a lot of snow. I'm reading that it's cold. But based on what your mainstream media is saying, that they're reporting these storms just as dramatically as we are over here. And the stay indoors, risk to life and limb. Is this the kind of forecasting or is this the kind of message that you got from your government officials throughout your lifetime? Or have your government officials become far more dramatic? And are they too looking to see how many of you obey authority? But looking at the reporting in Scotland, um, you could run out of gas today. National Grid warns that Scotland could run out of gas today as extreme weather continues. So, you have incredibly cold temperatures in Scotland and you're running out of gas? Really? The power operator has issued a gas deficit warning as fears mount that supplies could run empty amid extreme weather conditions across Britain. How is it that they run out of gas? Okay, you have winter and you have some blizzards and you have extreme cold temperatures. So people do use more gas. But it seems that these, like National Grid, or our utility companies here, because they were, during the January 4 blizzard that was taking place in New England, a lot of companies were saying that they were running out of oil. They were running out of gas. Well, how is this? Are they... Do they have just this limited, lim limited, small amount that they use up really quickly when the temperature gets cold for a while? That does not make sense to me. So I think a lot of this is um, orchestrated to keep everybody stressed. And then how many are going to run out of gas and then you can't get gas and then, you know, you're having to survive the very cold temperatures. You know, much of what is happening in all Western countries is to keep everybody stressed and to keep everybody feeling like you just don't have any security in it anymore. There's no security. And of course, when the supply is low, energy companies will inevitably hike prices to make a quick buck. Isn't that great? Homeless man found dead in tent, pitched in snow. So these pictures that I'm seeing coming out of Scotland, it does not seem to be, I mean, it doesn't seem like you got that much snow. But I have seen these pictures where you've had awful lot of people stuck, stranded on your motorways. So Scott's urge not to travel amid beast of the east, red alert.
And I also saw an article where you were being taught how to care for your dog during snowstorms. The infantilization of all of us, not just here in the United States, the infantilization of all Western people in particular. Yeah, you don't know how to care for your dogs during snowstorms. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. I, you guys in Massachusetts, up north, Michigan, and uh, Detroit area, Ohio, and Ireland and Scotland, uh, let me know what you are experiencing because it's really hard to figure out what the hell is going on when you get these reports that are inconsistent and nobody seems to be able to predict anything but you do have an awful lot of government officials coming out and they're there to protect you they're there as mommy and daddy to tell you you can't go out today. You can't go out to play because it's too dangerous out there. The only way that I can know what's happening is if I hear from you guys.